Back at building the dollhouse. So why am I staring at the side of my house? Well, I'll tell you why. Today, we are making the cuts for the siding. So this is siding as we know it. And when you're making a dollhouse, you gotta pay attention to the scale, especially if you wanna make it look realistic and good and professional. So this is real siding in real life about what you would expect it. This is how it looks. So you want it to look proportional. So this is how you do this. Um, we're gonna use a convenient measurement I have my hand um, because I know the doll also has a hand. So I'm going to take my hand and put it up against the siding, okay? And now you're going to understand that when you install siding, there's going to be an overlap. So we're going to go one third up the next panel and account for that distance there and then add it onto the distance, uh, the width of one of these panels. So that's probably about the width of these panels. These aren't exactly. Um, because that's not how these are made. These are like concrete to prevent termites, but for a dollhouse in the, in the old style They would overlap them so the rain runs off. So if I'm gonna cut them, it's gonna be one-third up to the bottom of this one So I'm gonna line up my finger there and see about where it ends. So Right about there like two inches up my arm Now other things we want to consider the doll is a female. So female hands are generally smaller than male hands. So I'm going to compensate for that when I'm lining up the doll on the wood. So let me, I'm going to pause the video real quick and then I'm going to show you guys that. Alright, so I set this up uh, a little earlier um, for ease of, of video making. Um, but I'll explain the steps and what I had to do and you can see what I did. So here's the doll and we just got the measurement, the estimate from our our hand on the siding. So this is the doll that I'm working with that I use for my scale. So we have our hand. We're going to put it down on the board approximately to where I had it. This is a, another mark that I did that I didn't want to use so I X'd it out. That's a good tip. So female hand, a little bit smaller. We're going to put it you know, to scale about three inches up her um, lower arm. So that's where it is. So then mark off with your pencil that length, your width, okay, the distance there. So that is going to be how wide we're going to cut these siding panels. So then to set up your saw, get your combo square. Buy a good combo square. This is a very handy tool. Um, you're going to line it up with this line here. Um, and then that extra gap in there is to compensate for the width of your saw blade. That's the difference of the saw blade. So put that on there, add a little bit for your saw blade, and then again I set this up beforehand. How I would do this is raise up the saw blade to get the maximum length of the saw blade exposed and then put the combo square up against the saw, line up my fence on the trailing edge and the leading edge of the saw blade. Uh, get it get it in place and lock it down and then you have a very true setup fence you should get a nice straight cut the reason I lower it back down the combo square out of the way and my carpenter pencil you want to expose as little of the blade as you possibly can uh, there are multiple reasons for this uh, one of them is that you're not going to be cutting too much of the board at one time you're always gonna, it's not perfect, you're gonna have shifts in the wood as you're sending it through. Um, it could chip your edge. Um, you want a nice clean edge, you don't have to sand up, it's not gonna splinter on you. Um, <clears throat> so that, that's basically it. You don't, you don't want your saw blade getting into all these uh, extra areas that it doesn't need to be cutting into. Another thing too, for obvious reasons, um, it could affect your safety. If there's more blade exposed, there's more of a chance for you to run your finger through it, and this isn't one of those fancy uh, stopping saws, so I make sure to keep my fingers clear of it all the time. I don't use the safety um, shield that goes on here. I think they're cumbersome. You can't do smaller pieces. It's not as easy to work with, so I bought it without the safety shield. I recommend if you're buying a saw, buy it with the safety shield. That way, if you decide you want to use it, it's there. Um, I understand that it's not there, and it doesn't really bother me. I just take extra precaution to not um, stick it in there. <clears throat> so, uh, some things that we want to consider, we see this as bowed. 
It's uh, warped a little bit from the humidity in the air. South George is very humid. I'm going to set up a way to keep your boards down nice and flat to run them through. Um, that way you don't have to really deal with the warping issue. Um, so I'm going to set that up and show you guys that. So this is how I do it. Um, you know, if you have a different way of doing it, you probably shouldn't be watching this channel because you're probably a better carpenter than me. But uh, basically you get a piece of scrap wood that's going to be clear of the blade. Um, and you put your stock piece underneath to find your, your height. Rest it on top and then clamp it down. And then what this does, you want to make sure it slides easily. What this does is it holds it nice and flat, nice and firm in place as you push it through. It's not going to ride up on the blade. Um, this is a tip I would definitely recommend if you're doing your rails for your French cleat system. Uh, I noticed when you're doing 45 degree rips, especially on the longer pieces, the um, piece of wood likes to um, ride up on the blade and you're not getting a centered good 45 degree cut and it'll be kind of a, a wavy thing when it does that. So this is definitely a good idea if you're doing that. Um, so there's that. I'm going to make a, a cut and show you guys um, you know, the finished result there. One more thing before I cut, um, you know, if you guys are following along and doing this as I'm doing it and pausing the video, um, don't make your cut on your big pieces first. You know, you always want to, these are, these are two foot by four foot sections that I cut out of a giant sheet, uh, eight by four uh, sheet. <clears throat> Use your scrap pieces if you have them to get it all lined up, get everything uh, ready to go. Once you have everything ready to go, uh, you know, make your first cut, examine it. If it's not right, um, you know, play with it a little bit, see if it's exactly what you want. And then, you know, if it's not, you can make adjustments cut another piece of scrap wood until it's, it's correct and then move on to your big expensive fresh virgin pieces of, uh, of paneling. So I'm going to do those after I get this all set up and ready to go. So again I'm going to make some cuts on here and then I'm going to do that. I'm going to play with a little bit let you guys know if it's good or not and then uh, you know I'll give a conclusion if it's good on this video. These look pretty good. These are uh, two pieces that I cut out. I played with them. I put them on the side. Um, you know, it's important to do that so that you can see any issues that are possibly going to arise before you make all of these. If you, once I get a good system going, and I make a couple of these, um, I know I made these for this length, this uh, side here. So if I keep making these, use these as a template for making more of them. I can cut them all the same length, the same width, all the way down. Um, as long as I have my saw set up for that, I can basically turn myself into a mini factory and get it all done and get it all knocked out. So um, basically what you're going to do, and I'll make a video separately probably today on installing these, but you're going to put work from the bottom up, put it uh, the bottom one on here, and then use your air nailer, um, nail it in place, and then the next one up, overlap it about one third. Um, or a little bit, just overlap it a little bit and then keep overlapping as you go up. Um, how I'm going to do this, I'm going to go over these windows and just go the whole way up and then once uh, once I get the whole side done, I'll go back inside with my um, multi-tool, my little air multi-tool and I'll cut out from the inside the window so I'll have a nice square window. And so that's it for this video. That's how you, you know, cut your siding out 
what you're going to do to uh, get to that point, what I'm doing. That's how I do it. Uh, if you have a better way, share it, share it in the comments. You know, maybe you have a link to another video. Um, so I hope this was informative. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I hope you guys have an outstanding day. I'm out.